Hello, welcome. My name is Hendrik, and today we are looking at another video of the series SAP EWM Meets Automation, a new series where I'm cooperating with the Swisslog SAP EWM team in order to discover some of the features, some of the functionalities and secrets of the MFS component of SAP EWM. Like an area which is come, becoming more and more relevant for the future in areas where we are we are automating more and more processes in our warehouses. So <clears throat> today we are looking at process which is like required in every warehouse where we have multi-def storage. So. Um, we are looking at, or, or you can, for, for, the, for the time of this video, you can just imagine a highway warehouse with uh, double deep bins. Uh, that's not something special, that's pretty common for highway warehouses where you um, have uh, requirements for high storage density. So you do not have much space. That's why you usually uh, use multi depth storage bins. So you have an environment where one, one bin holds multiple pellets behind each other, for example. So what's the rough agenda for this video? Um, at first, we will tackle the problem we are looking at, like which scenario are we covering here? And then we look at the customizing, which is needed to, to realize and cover this. And then we have a look at the standard coding. So we look behind the scenes of the standard logic here and at the, at the very end, again, I give a quick outlook about how to enhance the standard um, functionality. So what's the problem we are looking at? Um, I have some pictures here that makes it easier for you. So um, imagine such a, such a highway warehouse. You have one crane operating in one ale, and each side of the ale you have bins, and the bins have depth of um, two. Like you have one pellet in the front bin, that's a logical position uh, zero, 01 from EWM perspective, and you want pellet in the back bin, which is position zero, 02. So it might happen that uh, you run in a scenario where uh, pellet A is on the back bin, and pellet A is needed for stock removal or for picking, whatever. So in order to reach pellet A, you need to move pellet B to another bin. Uh, that's and that uh, sounds simple, like move B to another bin and then take A and take A somewhere else. Uh, it sounds simple, it might not be that simple. If you look at this scenario here, where we are moving pellet B out of the ale instead of another bin, why this can happen and how this is being implemented is uh, also part of the, the next minutes and next slides here. So we will look at the specialties with this process and how it's being implemented in, in SAP. So what prerequisites um, do we have in, uh, for customizing? First of all, storage type. Uh, there are specific parameters which need to be set. Uh, the storage type role needs to be you know, like uh, MFS storage type. We need to have HUs and uh, the level of available quantity needs to be the HU. Uh, and not the bin. Um, it's not possible to use fixed bins, and of course, yeah, the multi-death parameter needs to be set. Uh, you need to um, define the required bin death for handling units as well as the maximum bin death for the storage bin types. Uh, and so, based on this, uh, if you create bins with specific bin types, then um, you will later, once you have stock on the bin, see the logical position along with the HU uh, on the same bin, two different logical positions with two different HUs. And in the warehouse task, you will also see the position. Uh, here it's the source position. It might also be the destination position along with the warehouse task details uh, if you are using such bins. That's it in terms of customizing. So we can, we can start looking at the uh, standard logic. This is this is all about the the body MFS MD rearrange HU. 
And uh, the logic is being called from the function model module SCWM WT underscore dead. Um, this function module is the, the, the main or the, the, uh, the heart of logic which selects, selects the next task to be processed and to be sent to the subsystem. So if you have a MFS environment, imagine this automated highway on the one hand, um, controlled by the subsystem, by the PLCs, and EWM on the other hand, EWM decides um, about the next task to be sent to the subsystem, uh, to the to this automation, let's say, black box. So um, EWM needs to decide what is the next task I hand over to the PLC. That's the, the main function module that I mentioned before. And here we have some, one subroutine uh, called select warehouse order. And here we determine the next Whereas order, respectively, whereas task um, to be handed over to the subsystem. Uh, and in this context here, we have the subroutine team called body um, multi-deep. Uh, and from this subroutine, again here, you have the, stop, you have the spot that um, calls the body, which is holding the rearrangement logic that I mentioned before. So lo the logic which decides whether or not we need to um, rearrange an HU, meaning uh, moving a HU from one bin away to another bin or out of the ale in order to reach the HU that we actually want to process. This is the body. And um, here you see that there is a standard fallback class. And um, within the next minutes, we will look at the details of this standard fallback class because this is already holding all the magic and it's a base for, for you in case you want to include and add your custom logic here. So let's look behind the scenes here. The main logic is separated into two steps and we have method check HU in bin. That's the first thing which is called and um, the, the second method is the transfer HU here. So in the, in the first method, we actually decide um, whether something has to be done or not, whether we need to rearrange something. And the second method uh, is then actually doing the, the rearrangement and decides how we are going to um, move the HU, which is, which is blocking the one that we want to remove, actually. So let's look into the first method here, uh, the interface method check HU in bin. And here, the first thing we do, we actually determine the necessity. Do we actually need to rearrange something? So imagine you have a multi-def bin. And if in this multi-def bin, the HU that we want to remove is on position two, but there is no, posi no HU on position one at all. Of course, we don't need to do anything. Uh, it's not necessary to rearrange something. Or if the HU that we want to um, remove is actually sitting on position one, we also don't need to do anything. Yeah? Remember, one is always the front position, two is the back position, uh, at least in a, in a double death um, uh, storage here. So what we do here is uh, we, we, we select all HUs that we have, and then we sort by the logical position. So in the internal table, um, the pellet on uh, after the sorting, the HU on um, the first row of our internal table is the one on position one. And if this is equal to the one that we want to remove right now here in this context during runtime, then we don't need to do anything. Uh, and if it's not the case, uh, then we need to rearrange. Uh, so that's the check. Uh, and then we, we hand over uh, this internal table rearrange HU um, uh, to the caller of the method. And um, as I said, in standard, it's always one HU only, but you might want to implement your own logic. You have like triple death storage where three HUs are sitting behind each other. And here you might have to rearrange more than one HU. So you can um, add those to the table here. Then we call the transfer HU method, uh, the second step in the body, and which is actually doing the, the execution. Uh, the first one did the determination, and here we execute. And the first thing that we do is we look at the, the PLC. Well, with the, usually you have one PLC handling the crane or multiple cranes. And in the PLC customizing, here you specify the warehouse process type, which is used to create tasks for handling units, which 
to be rearranged because they are blocking other issues. We, we read this data from here, and then uh, we check uh, the stock transfer threshold. In a uh, multi-death environment, it, it might happen that HUs are transferred like from one bin to another bin, and they are again blocking another HU, and they again have to be transferred. So um, it might happen that they are moved a lot of times, and depending on the kind of products which are stored on the pellet, it might happen that the content of the pellet moves with each movement, and they have to be realigned uh, after a specific number of movements. So, for example, if the HU has been rearranged five times within the AL, there's a requirement to move the pellet out of the AL to realign the content. Uh, and this uh, can be um, maintained here in customizing based on the resource type, a maximum number of transfers, and then it's stored in the header data of the HU, this value. So each time we do a stock transfer, like a rearrangement, um, we increase this counter in the header data of the HU, and then we can evaluate this here in this context, and you will understand within the next minutes what's uh, happening based on this um, value, if it increased the threshold or not. The error bin uh, that you maintain in the master data for the, of the resource, uh, that would be the destination if the uh, HU of the counter on the HU had uh, increased the threshold. So in our example, they, it's allowed to move the HU five times before the content has to be realigned, which is happening outside of the AL. So if it's allowed five times, and then um, if the HU is again blocking another HU needs to be um, rearranged, then standard logic looks at the resource, takes the error bin and moves the HU towards the error bin. Usually this is the deposit bin of the um, ale, and then from there you implement a logic to move it to like uh, quality check station or some, some physical uh, realignment uh, facility, something. Uh, or, or you just pass it via the eye point and if the contour um, dimension check on the eye point said everything is still fine, then you can just move it back. And uh, if you have some uh, error with the length of the width or the height of the pellet, uh, then you can reject it and correct it on the reject station. Good, the next step. Um, once uh, this uh, number of rearrangement checks completed, the next check uh, we are doing is that we search for an existing task for the HU, uh, which is blocking the one that we want to uh, remove in this context. So remember, we want to get the HU from position 2, but there is an HU sitting on position 1. For this HU on position 1, we now want to create a rearrangement task, but we cannot do that if the HU already has a task. Uh, an HU can always have one HU task at a time. So here we check, uh, does this HU actually have a task already? Yeah? And if yes, we, we hand over um, this task to the to the caller here. So we just write this task into the uh, changing variable here, and that would end up uh, in a result that instead of processing the task for the HU in the back, we just process the task for the HU in the front at first now. Yeah, and then we call the uh, MFS WT dead function module again um, next time, and uh, then uh, the uh, HU on the back position is no longer blocked. Yeah. This does not take into consideration that the HU in the front position might not be needed at this point in time. Uh, it might be needed at the, like some hours later or the next day only, and uh, this is a spot where you might want to include your own logic. Yeah. But standard just checks, okay, if the HU on position one, which is blocking our HU, if it already has a task, then we just process this task and move the HU wherever this task wants to move the HU. It might be just another picking task for another delivery or something. So this way we get rid of the HU and uh, like put it, uh, move it where it should move. If this is not the case, uh, so the HU does not have a task, we create a new one. And uh, here again, the logic that I, that I mentioned explained before, if 
the max number of tr stock transfers is uh, increased. So the number of transfers in the HU had a, uh, is higher or equal than the threshold from the resource data. Then we create a HU task towards the error bin. So that's here the destination bin is set equal to the error destination bin from the resource uh, master data that I showed you above. And if it's uh, smaller than the threshold, we just uh, create a new task here with the warehouse process type from the PLC customizing that I showed you before. Then um, the result, again, uh, send it over to the uh, MFS WT dead function module that I mentioned before, which is doing the dispatching, which is deciding about which task is going to be hand over to the subsystem. Yeah? And based on this decision, it creates a, a telegram and hands it over to the PLC. And that's it. So um, just before we jump uh, into the um, enhancement section here, just to summarize, in the first step we decide, do we actually need to rearrange? Uh, and if yes, we check this existing task. Yeah. Can we just uh, use an existing task and remove the HU, which is, which is blocking here then from the AL? And uh, if not, we create a new task based on the, with the warehouse process type from the customizing. And in this context, we apply these checks whether we actually allow to move this HU within the AL or not based on the threshold value. So how can we enhance here and why should we actually enhance here? Yeah? I just, just collected a couple of ideas and, and things that I had in mind um, uh, which might want to make you uh, include an enhancement here. And um, some of those potential reasons are um, inconsistency of uh, storage bin data. Uh, you see here in the first method where we decide whether we need to do rearrangement or not, the standard applies a check on the bin master data. Uh, so if the, again, remember we are in we a um, uh, double deep storage bin and uh, standard is checking the um, number of storage units from uh, warehouse storage bin data and the number of HUs on the bin. Uh, so if one of those is smaller than two, standard thinks, okay, we don't need to rearrange. But everybody who's working with uh, EWM for some time already knows that uh, it's quite common to have some inconsistencies in the storage bin master data uh, or application data here. The, the, max, the, the current number of HUs sometimes uh, inconsistent with the actual stock data. Uh, there, there are actually some like, uh, recalculation uh, SAP nodes and reports to fix uh, that inconsistencies. But um, if you have those, then that will crash the whole logic here because then it decides to uh, do a re rearrangement where no rearrangement is needed or the other way around. Yeah. Here rather the other way around. It, it returns if uh, this is smaller than two and uh, there will be scenarios where this is smaller than two, although there are two HUs in the bin. Second point I just mentioned is the cancellation of tasks for the blocker HUs. So I explained to you that if there is already a task for the HU on the front position, then the standard just executes it, but the HU might not be needed at this point in time. So the standard might just move it to a pick station or through the pack station or through the outfeed, but you need the HUs per, you need the HU perhaps like tomorrow morning when the delivery is being processed or the wave is ready for being, for being picked and shipped. And you create it for any reason, you created it up front, but put it into like a block status or something. Uh, so now you process it, or you, although you cannot store the pellet physically somewhere, buffer it. So you might want to think about including logic here that cancels a task, then does the rearrangement, and then recreates a task, so that it, the HU is still uh, stays in the in the high bay instead of being removed from the high bay and stored somewhere out out of the high bay on the on the conveyor or on the on the floor. Uh, last idea is the rearrangement of multiple HUs from one bin. I mentioned that we are only talking about double deep storage here in standard. It's mentioned at many places in standard only one HU can be rearranged at once. But if you have a requirement that you have more than double deep bins, then you need to include your own logic anyhow. And at the end, technically, um, what, you, what you would want to do is uh, just the creation of a subclass of this class, which is used as a fallback for the body. And then your subclass can inherit from there and you can add whatever is needed for your project. That's it. Um, as a summary, I, I won't repeat it again. 
it's not too complex this topic, but still uh, something which uh, has some hiccups, which is specific to MFS, which is something you, you just uh, want to know where it's sitting and what the standard is doing here. And I hope that you could derive this from this video. Um, as usual, the script is available on wmexperts.online as a blog post. And uh, to close this video, I want to uh, highlight again that this uh, um, was done together with the SAP EWM team at SwissLog. And if you want to get in touch with SwissLog, for example, in order to have access to experts for your um, automation projects, uh, where you need to integrate SAP EWM with any kind of automated hardware, yeah, feel free to get in touch. I, I put the links in the description of the video. Apart from this, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll regularly post videos about the integration of uh, automation here, the MFS component of EWM, as well as uh, videos from our other series that you already know from this channel. Yeah? Thank you for now and uh, hope to see you again for the next video. Yeah, Bye.